Hello and welcome back to another video where today we're going to take a look at Helldivers 2 across four generations of Ryzen CPUs. It's my collection of Ryzen CPUs that I own and I wanted to check them out on this video because Helldivers 2 is a popular game but it's also interesting because it is CPU demanding and that can also vary depending on what's going on in the game. So we're going to begin with the Ryzen 2600 then move to the 3700X then to the 5900X, then 7700X, and then 7800X3D. And we'll also compare all of them together just to see the progression of AMD CPUs. So let's not waste any time and dive straight into it. We're going to begin with the Ryzen 2600, which I've gone ahead and manually overclocked the 4.1 gigahertz all core. We're using a Strix B550F gaming Wi-Fi motherboard and 32 gigs of RAM CL16 3600 megahertz, which I've down clocked to 3200 megahertz because the Ryzen 2600 can't really do that. And we'll be using an RTX 4090 as our primary GPU targeting 1440p, although we'll look at 4K as well. And I'll also throw a little bit of 3080 Ti in there as well for comparison's sake. So let's begin. I want to begin with a bit of solo gameplay before we jump into group gameplay where things get chaotic. And at 4K native, we are getting around 60 FPS. Our 1% lows are in the 40s, but we're here. clearly CPU bound. RTX 4090 is only running at around 60%. And we can even drop the render scale from native to quality and the FPS will still be the same. That's because we're CPU bound. As a matter of fact, even if we were to drop to the performance, which is, I think it's like around 1080p or something like that, we're still at 60 FPS. I did listen to some of you guys' feedback though on my previous Helldivers video and I made sure to take a look at group gameplay where things get chaotic because it actually even surprised me how much this game can hammer the CPU and the performance. But as you can see, the 4090 is asleep here. But how does it run in group gameplay? Let's check it out. And in group gameplay, we've gone ahead and dropped a 1440p native with all the graphical settings maxed out. And whereas before in solo gameplay, we were able to be close to 60 FPS, we've dropped down significantly. We're even hitting the high 30s sometimes interestingly enough though the one percent lows is still in the mid 30s same as it was in the solo gameplay but you can see the cpu get hammered whenever there's a lot of stuff going on on the screen and as a result the fps drops we'll skip over to the extraction part of this mission and here you can see that we are dropping to the high 30s Although the 1% lows are still in the 30s, which was the same as in the solo mission, which is kind of interesting, but we have lost a lot of our average FPS by playing in a group and with all the stuff going on. So I can only imagine what it would be like if you were playing in Helldiver difficulty. Even if we were to use a slightly weaker GPU like a 3080 Ti, as you can see here, it is CPU bound and this is a solo mission too at 1440p. So while we're able to maintain around 60 in this solo mission, as you've seen earlier, in group gameplay that is not the case, but the 2600 was never really a high-end CPU, and back then AMD wasn't great at gaming, they were beginning to get better and better. Speaking of which, why don't we check out the next generation, the Ryzen 3700X, and see how that does in Helldivers 2. This here is my 3700X, and these CPUs were never really great overclockers, especially mine in particular, but I've gone ahead and done a 4.2 GHz overclock on all cores, and we're still using the same motherboard, and I've also had to downclock the memory from 3600 to 3200 MHz, so the CPU is stable, and yeah, let's check out the gameplay. We'll begin with some solo gameplay, take it easy with the 3700X, and... Yeah, as you can see, we are CPU bound. This is a continuing trend, guys, uh, for the rest of this video that you will come to see. So it was a bit eye-opening for me as well. And even if we were to actually increase the resolution to 4K in solo gameplay, we'd still be CPU bound, even at 4K with the 3700X, because this game is CPU demanding. 
it's only our GPU usage went from 54% to the mid 80s now. But how does the 3080 Ti compare? Well, at 1440p, 3700X actually does pretty well, although it still becomes a bottleneck, even with the 3080 Ti in uh, solo gameplay. As you can see, we dropped into the 70s of GPU usage for a brief moment of time. However, solo gameplay is one thing. What about group gameplay when it all hits the fan, though? In group gameplay, the 3700X actually did quite well. As a matter of fact, the 1% lows were between 55 and 60. But this is the extraction part of the mission. This was a long mission that we played and I ended up resetting the 1% lows and FPS averages counter just to see how it would be impacted by the extraction process, which tends to be the heaviest parts of the mission and the hardest on the CPU. You can clearly see uh, how bottleneck the 4090 is. It's only running at 43% at 1440p in this group gameplay. Still though, compared to the Ryzen 2600, the performance gains here are very, very good. AMD made some good advancements from Ryzen 2000 to 3000 for gaming. In this same exact scenario, on the Ryzen 2600, we had 42 FPS average and 33 FPS 1% lows versus Ryzen 3700X's 70 FPS averages and 58 FPS 1% lows. That's around a 70% increase in CPU performance in Helldivers 2 which if you ask me is a pretty good benchmark for CPU performance in gaming. For what it's worth though, I think the 3700X is capable of delivering a 60 FPS experience. I mean, it's able to deliver more than that, but on 1% lows, it's pretty close to 60. Very important metric for frame time fluidity. But anyway, why don't we check out the next generation of Ryzen and see how that compares to the previous two. So we're going to jump on my 5900X for the next part of this video. Let's check it out. For the 5900X, I decided to skip the solo gameplay, even though I did capture it. It was more or less very similar. I wanted to test it mostly on the weaker CPUs because I felt it was more relevant on those. But this mission here, guys, was the craziest mission I've ever been. We actually wiped here and it hammered the 5900X, which by the way, I have manually overclocked the 4.5 gigahertz all core and set the memory back to the default 3600 megahertz CL60. Now, the reason why I say this mission was so crazy is because it was. And if you look at the averages and 1% lows, it's crazy, but it's actually practically the same as the 3700X. The 3700X, we had 70 FPS for averages and 58 FPS for 1% lows. And on the 5900X, we have 71 FPS for averages, so only one more FPS and 55 FPS for the 1% lows. So we're actually three FPS less than the 3700X. Could this be because of the mission being so crazy? I mean, I think it kind of has to be, although I can't say that I am not surprised. I, I would have thought that it would be uh, consistently ahead, right? I mean, it's a it's a known fact that AMD made some pretty nice gains in gameplay performance going from Ryzen 3000 to Ryzen 5000. There is uh, a lot of benchmarks that have uh, shown this, but I can only show what I've experienced in this game <laughs> that I painstakingly recorded over, over a few days. And these are the results that I got. As you can see on the screen, the Ryzen 5900X is performing very similar to the 3700X. And you can see with the 4090, we're not even at, we're very close to 50% GPU use. So we are consistently CPU bound in this game, which will be the same thing for the next CPUs too, by the way, at 1440p. So speaking of which, why don't we jump onto the AM5 platform on the new socket and current generation of Ryzen CPUs. We're going to begin with the 7700X and then leave the 7800X 3D for last. So let's do that. Let's begin with the Ryzen 7700X, which I've actually undervolted a bit on the curve optimizer in the BIOS and we're using 6000 megahertz 
C30 memory, 32 gigabytes, and we're going to be checking the game out at 1440p. I decided to capture some of the in spaceship gameplay just because this area is not all that demanding, so it kind of gives us a good reference point, which we can also cross compare to the 7800X 3D. Because I'm comparing this footage for the very first time now, guys, but just from what I saw, I didn't really notice much of a difference between the 7700X and the 7800X 3D, but I guess we'll find out as this video unfolds. But that said, let's jump into a group mission and see what we get. What was interesting about this mission is that I ended up almost doing an exact same mission for the 7800X3D as well. So this will be a very interesting comparison. And also, I haven't used my Ryzen 7700X in actually a very long time. So this is quite exciting to, to be able to check it out. But immediately after looking at the 5900X, I can already tell here that we're getting a lot better performance. With the previous CPUs, we were all below the 100 FPS, or even close to it actually. We are in the 70s, and here with the 7700X, we are doing extremely well. The 4090 is still CPU bound. We're at around 80% GPU utilization, but it's much higher than it was with the Ryzen 5000 or 3000, which was at around the 50% mark. So that's going to result in much better performance for us, better averages and 1% lows, hopefully. But let's continue on with the mission and see how it compares to the other CPUs and actually come up with a number. Well, we can immediately see a very nice healthy gain in performance. We went from 71 FPS average on the 5900X to 108 FPS average on the 7700X. And then went from 55 FPS for the 1% lows on the 5900X to 77 FPS for the 1% lows on the 7700X. That is a very nice gain. And that gain amounts to plus 52% faster on the averages for the Ryzen 7700X over the 5900X and plus 40% faster on the 1% lows for the 7700X over the Ryzen 5900X. So some very nice gains. I do have a feeling though that this game can be a bit too variable because I kind of refuse to accept that the 5900X and 3700X would perform so similarly. Uh, I mean, this is kind of like uh, making me question quite a few things, but it is what it is, and these are the numbers. And with that said, I think we should check out the 7800X 3D, because those numbers are very interesting as well. Let's check it out. Okay, so we're going to begin with the 7800X 3D here, and to me it looked like the 7800X 3D was actually very, very close to the 7700X in performance. So since I captured this in the ship part on both, I wanted to kind of put it side by side. And I also would like to mention that I did drop around 20 FPS. I was getting around 200 on both, and then when I hit record, I dropped around 15 to 20 FPS so that was interesting I've never seen that kind of a drop before but I do have to invest in a capture card at some point but as you can see here these two CPUs are very close yeah the 7800X 3D on the right is a little bit faster here, here. but would you notice it yourself. no I don't think so I, I, I mean to me they're very very close slightly faster 1% lows on the 7800X 3D in this like for like footage because in this game you can never get it to be exactly the same. As a matter of fact, I even captured some tutorial footage to compare between the two, because that's the only one I can get that is exactly the same. But let's check out some group gameplay on the 7800X 3D and compare it. I ended up actually locking out, like I mentioned, because this mission was very similar to the 7700X mission that I did. So therefore the numbers are very accurate and Lo and behold, if you compare the two, you more or less can't really even tell the difference because on the 7800X 3D, we had 113 average FPS 
compared to 7700 X's 108 average FPS. So only about five more FPS on the averages. And the 1% lows, they were actually 77 on both CPUs. So that is very interesting. It could be that this game is benefiting from the higher clocks of the 7700X, which is running at around 5.4 gigahertz, whereas the 7800X CD only runs at 4.9 and makes up with the 3D cache for the rest of it, sometimes doing even better. But in this game, they're very similar. What I ended up doing was I compared the tutorial part of the game because it's consistent. And the results there are more or less the same as well, except that the 7800X3D has a slightly better 1% lows. But I would say between the two, they're very similar. As a matter of fact, I'll skip towards the end of the tutorial here, where I ended up comparing the numbers. And basically, we have the same exact averages on both 153 FPS and on the 7800X3D, the 1% lows are 7% faster. So this is a like for like, as like for like as I could get it. And this actually matches the previous mission that we looked at as well. So this will be it for this video. It took me quite a while to make this one, but I did want to take a look at all the CPUs. I still find the 3700X and 5900X quite strange. So, I don't know. Maybe I should do more comparisons between them two CPUs with other games as well. But, I don't know. What did you guys think? Did you like this video? If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing. I appreciate you all watching. And thanks a lot for reaching 1,000 subscribers on the channel. I couldn't do it without all of you. And I really do appreciate it. And I'm very thankful for it as well. So, I hope you all have a great weekend. And I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.